Since you are still very much in our Merdeka mode, I want to play one of this video, which is actually made by Shopee. I, I think everybody knows Shopee as Shopee. No? Okay, this yeah. is how the video goes. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, okay. I think I, 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 I don't believe you know the singer. But but I think you all know the mother. The mother. Do you know who who, who, who is the mother? Sheila Majid. She's a daughter of Sheila Majid. Okay, come on. So our topic today is grassroots invention, grassroots in inventors, right? So what is the difference between a grassroots inventors and a non-grassroots inventor? Right? So Basically, I think we can just divide this uh, Snow White apple into half, lah, right? So for the for the the other side, which is non grassroots, they are basically the government type agencies. Eh? We can actually classify them. You know, they are usually comprised of government agencies like my, you know, whoever eh? that they are universities, big corporation, R and D. Because these people have a lot of all these R and D labs. You know, your huge funds. God, they do very stringent tests. They got everything there, right? This is the other half, the what we call this, the what some sort like the, the what the fortunate son type of thing, right? So on the other half, which is our the the the, the what the poorer cousin, right? We are the individuals, the usually com comprised of the other uh, the hobbies, you know, those who are home based. We do tradition type of of ideas, usually are uh, what I mean, they are, they are uh, uh, oriented to the community type of thing, right? Then we are self-funded, so we are poor, right? We do our thing in the backyard, you know, and our product are more like it won't be so refined. Does doesn't look that good, you know, because and our we may have limited type of marketing target. That is what separates us as a gastronomy. Oops, it's not moving. All right. Okay. So I think this is a very famous uh, quotation. Uh, this guy, his name is Charles Hollander. He was the, of course, he's that long ago. Lah. He was the commission of the patent office in America in 1898. You know, this guy, see what, no? Every, that, everything that can be invented has to be invented. We should close the patent office. That's a, you know, until today, <laughs> his famous statement still, uh, very, very well known. Okay, I think, as you know, like, I, I don't think it's true, right? Because many years ago, there were iPhone 4 and people thought it's the best. This is, nothing can be better than iPhone 4. But you know, like, you know, like iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 12 now, 
Right. So invention never stops, eh? You heard that. Don't people always inv tell people, tell inventor, don't go and reinvent the wheel. But okay, we, we don't do it reinvent wheel, it's okay. But between the wheels itself, there are many other things which can be invented. They are the tires, right? You could Yoko Hama with a good ear, not everybody compete against Jessica with the new innovations. You got hub cap, you got rims, you got tubes, you got plenty of things, right? So there's no limitation of what you can do other from the wheel. Right. The basic concept is the wheel, the round thing, the rose, right? But, but to make the thing better, there are many other things which can be added. Example like our, our, our little pencil, no, our pen or pencil. They are the common pencils. Then people come out with the peeling pencil because they do not need a sharpener. All they need to make the, the pencil sharper, they just pull the string and the, the, the wrapper will goes away, right? right then the, 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 the nib of the pencil will come out again. Right? Then we got mechanical pencil, get pencil. And as you know that, maybe the younger generation do not know what is the extendable pencil holder. Right, Mr. Sugu, maybe your generation is you know, right? <laughs> well, we are poor, see? so when even a pencil becomes very short, normally last time you know, money, yeah. right? Not like this, this, uh, four inches you throw away, <laughs> right? So people are poor, see? so if the pencil becomes so short, they cannot hold, so they need to extend it, you see? So somebody make an extender where they just pluck it and the pencil becomes longer and can use, huh? Longer, la. <laughs> right? So they see, they see what I mean is that you can add a lot of things to an existing product. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you can improve the wheel. Things like that, right? I think everybody have, 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 have opened a, a can of, of drink before. See, those days, as you know that the original can, when they pull out the tap, the tap usually will come out. Am I correct? The tap comes out those days. So with the tap in your hand, what do you do with the tap? You need to throw it away. You, you need to find a, a, a basket or a, a dustbin to throw. So it becomes very inconvenient, inconvenient that people, you know, sometimes put it in the pocket, they take it home, right? And they put it in the washing machine, they're going to they come out. Right? So somebody had this bright idea that when you pull the cap, the tap is still intact. Oh, just a simple thing. I think he become a very rich man with, with that, that, that simple added on innovation to an existing product, right? So you don't have to reinvent the whole thing. You know what I mean? Say you don't have to make the can. You just make the tap. Example like a straw, right? Those days, everybody, I think here we, I, I don't think I want to promote straws, but beside the point, right? So with that straw, somebody invented a straw which is bendable, you know, that's a bending straw. With this type of features, you know, the cost is to, to produce a straw is the same. But he added the, the bending feature, and you know, he, 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 the guy can sell you four times more than the cost of the, your ordinary straw. And somebody later come up with a straw with a spoon, so when you eat your, you know, your, your, your what, the, the, the tea, tea, tea leaf type of drink, right? You need to scoop the, what I say, the, the, the small part really thing, or you need a spoon. Right? So you can add in with new features, you improve on the innovations. This is what we can do as grassroots inventor. We cannot come up with a new straw, but you can come up with a straw with an added feature. Okay, this is my invention. Very simple, very practical. You might not think of it. Right? So a lot of invention is for you to be able to see a problem. I'm sure you all tapao la, you all go to the mama store, you go to what chicken rice thing, right? So when you when you want to take away your, your food or thing, usually it comes with a plastic bag. So plastic bag usually tied with a rubber band. Am I correct? Right? So a rubber band. So what is the problem? What is the difficulties or you know, inconvenience which you see in this thing? I'm sure you 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 agree with my answer. When you go back, the problem is to untie, right? So you need to untie, you need to, you know, sometimes you need to find a knife to cut, you use uh, your mouth to bite, whatever, all right? That is actually inconvenience. It's not the end of the world, but it's, it's an inconvenience. People pay for inconvenience, right? To improve, I mean, to pay for convenience, right? So if you're in inconvenient, people will be to pay, right? So, okay. So how 
are you going to solve this problem of inconvenience? As everyone knows, a rubber band, uh, a rubber band, right? So rubber band is for you to tie, you know, tie whatever you want to tie, right? You, you tie, tie something, right? So see, for me to untie, it's so simple. I can even close my eye, I can untie, look at this. I managed to untie. So what is so special? You know what was the answer? It is a rubber band with a loop. The added feature is the loop, right? So when you tie your, 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 your plastic bag or whatever you tie, that is a saw thumb that's going to stick out. So you just pull it out, solve the problem. So simple thing like that, is it? So of course, it's not the innovation. It's not for the hawker or, or the user of rubber band to tie a loop, a loop for every rubber stamp because it would be very inconvenient to him. So we are getting the producer, the manufacturer of the rubber band to produce rubber band which have a knock. Right? So it's, it's quite simple. Even the production, we are thinking, we thought of everything already. So, you see, to make rubber bands, if you watch in the YouTube, what they, how they do rubber bands, they just take a shaft, say, dip into latex like you make clothes, you're going to take it out, you, you will form a, a when it dries, it form a tube, say. then they put the tube in the machine, they just need to cut, cut each pieces that come out. So to make a rubber band, which have a knob, all they have to do is that they have to cut the drain into the mold, into the tube, right? For the latex to go inside the drain, right? That will form the, the extra part. So when you cut the thing, when you cut each piece that come out, they will have a look. That's all you do, right? You don't have to chain the whole machine. Is it? If you do a dimension, we need to, to chain all the machines and it, it might be difficult. People might not agree, right? So, okay, this is my invention. It was a long time ago. It is a machine to make rubber stamps in five minutes. Those days, as, as you know, when your company or when you want to open a bank account, when you want to make a job, you go to the bookstore. It takes you one week before you can make a job. Am I correct? Right? Somebody make an order, right? You have to come out one week later. Because this guy, you know how many rubber stamps those days? They had to pick the letter bits to compose your name. Your name is Alibaba. You have to put A, L, I, the arrange the thing, like type set, you know, like everything. Right? Then they, they make a mold, a plaster mold, and burn the rubber inside the mold, and come out all this. It's very tedious and very inconvenient type of production. That's why it takes so long. So my invention is come out with a machine. It, it was in 1994, a long time ago. A small machine as big as a laptop. Anything you print out on a paper, you can make into a chop in five minutes, right? So it's actually, you know, right, 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 the whole industry of rubber stamps. Those, those, those tradition of maker, they are actually wiped up. There's no more of them, right? And for this, I was the national inventor of the year, right? I am sir, right? I was top. So this is one of my other invention. I got many inventions, but I just highlight some of them, right? It's a, you know, have you ever seen a blind man using a handphone? People, you can, you can imagine a blind man using a handphone, right? Yes, they can actually use. Maybe they are using this tradition, and uh, this olden type of Nokia, you know, where the keypad is a physical keypad. They can feel. Usually, as you know, number five, there is a bubble for number five, even our leaf, say, that's number five. So the agar agar, they can estimate now. That's number four, that's number three, you know? They just know how to move the thing. But now we're talking about a, a smartphone, a touch screen phone. Are the blind people is like able to use that? <coughs> Think, you know? So my invention is so simple. We develop an app to bring out the dialer in Braille. As you know, the Braille, there are only six buttons. With that six button, these blind people, if they know Braille, they can actually construct all the, 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 the character and to form the words, right? And they can send the text. Where is very, very accurate and very easy. Because, they, you know, because what we do is we, we create the apps and we give them, okay, okay, you can create the apps. Everybody say we create apps. The apps is there, the dialer is there, but this guy cannot see. 
the blind and they cannot feel because it's a touch screen. How would they know where are the buttons? All right? Then the trick is that we give them a plastic, like it's actually the screen protector. We punch the hole or make a marking and boss it to go inside with where the buttons are. They can feel it. Now they can feel where the button. You know, in a Chinese playing mahjong, right? Touch the, the towels, they know what is the, <laughs> the, the mahjong piece, right? So using the same concept, see, they can actually use a phone. They can send text as fast as you. We are giving this, this, uh, this software everything to the blind people association. All they have to do is download the apps and to get a friend to, to, to make the, the, the screen uh, uh, no, plastic for them. Yeah. Right? For this, I actually want Apita award. Maybe you're not, some people are not familiar. Apita is the Asia Pacific ICT awards for some time ago. Right? Simple and practical and, and cheap. Lah. There's no cost. So we just give it to them out of more on human during that thing. Okay, another video to show you. Dalam dunia serba modern ini, terdapat banyak barangan ataupun teknologi yang telah dicipta bagi memudahkan kehidupan seharian kita. Tapi kurang tahu tak, terdapat juga barangan harian yang kita gunakan sebenarnya dicipta oleh orang Malaysia sendiri. Malah ciptaan ini juga turut digunakan di seluruh dunia. Oleh itu dalam video kali ini, Faktau akan senaraikan pelbagai barangan harian dan teknologi yang terkenal di seluruh dunia yang dicipta oleh orang Malaysia. Jadi tanpa membuang masa, cuba dengan lawatan ke pameran. 10 barang yang terkenal di dunia dicipta orang Malaysia. Mesin setem cok getah. Sebelum wujudnya politron, kebiasaannya untuk menyiapkan sebuah setem cok getah boleh memakan masa sehingga seminggu. Disebabkan idea Robert Young dan beradaptasi teknologi percetakan yang boleh jumpa di Jepun maka terciptalah poliklon iaitu sebuah mesin yang boleh menghasilkan stem cok getah dengan kadar segera. Menariknya, ciptaan ini telah membuatkan beliau memenangi pingat emas di pertandingan mencipta antarabangsa pada tahun 1994 di Geneva. Selain poliklon, beliau juga mencipta barangan lain seperti pelekat nyamuk, baja, incubator telur dan alat untuk membolehkan orang buta menaik menggunakan telefon pintar di mana alat ini tersenarai dalam list yang seterusnya. 8. Telefon Pintar Orang Buta Masih lagi alat ciptaan Robert Young, Real Vision Touch merupakan alat yang membolehkan orang buta menggunakan telefon pintar dengan mudah dan pantas di mana mereka boleh menaik sepantas orang yang boleh melihat telefon. Alat ini berfungsi dengan pengguna perlu membuat naik aplikasi Vision Touch yang terdapat di Google Play di mana aplikasi ini akan menghasilkan susun atur terkunci pada skrin. Kemudian, pengguna perlu menggunakan pelekat dan ditampal pada skrin telefon di mana pada pelekat ini terdapat tanda yang bertepatan dengan susunan aplikasi Vision Touch bagi membolehkan pengguna mengenal pasti kedudukan papan terkunci pada skrin yang menariknya Alat ini mampu membantu pengguna untuk membuat panggilan, mengatur mesej dengan cepat dan tepat, mengenal pasti kedudukan aplikasi di telefon mereka dan melayari laman web seperti Wikipedia dan portal berita hebat kan. Alright, thank you. <laughs> See, I'm proud that out of the 10, I have two there. Alright. Okay. So my actually my my hobby, right, is to is to solve problems. Uh, I I have a passion of doing that. So this is a, one of the other mission is to solve because I I become a uh, interested. I become interested in gardening myself. So one day when I was in uh, going to the nursery to buy some fertilizer, I found that, that most of them come in a big bag, bulky and heavy, and it does not work so well because it's very diluted and that's a lot of filler, 80 percent of filler make it big and, and, and huge right and it, that's why it doesn't quite work so i come out with a very simple it's, it's not that simple actually we take some time to do this right comes that that it, innovation is actually it comes the 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 it's a probiotic type of enzyme where we put inside the the soil 
the microbe will grow. We need a lot of microbe to break down whatever uh, nutrients we are putting in and what existing is existed in the soil. And the, the unique part is the, is the application itself. It's in powder form where you just sprinkle on once a month. It's just like Ajinomoto and I just sprinkle, you know, then the thing will grow. <laughs> Right? Because we make it small, we make it very concentrated. Of course, it's, it's, the cost of my, my, be very, uh, more expensive than why you buy a big bag. Say. But in the long run, this is cheaper. One cube, which is just 100 gram, we can last you 15 years of one pot of plant. You only put once a month. Once a month, and you just water it. Right? Because one tube can actually have about 200 dashes. If once a month, you only put 12 times a year. In 10 years, you only put 120 times. Right? So this product, we're even selling to uh, Indonesia and Thailand, where we market it through, where they market it, because I just sell to them, right? under their own brand, through multi-level marketing. So, you know, it's quite a huge success for this. Maybe you'd like to see another word, you know, since we got time. <laughs> I got plenty of videos to show. Forestry photonics and fertilizers. These are some of the fields in which Malaysians have created new and better ideas. And this is what we bring you in today's episode of Malaysian Inventions and Innovations. and he is one of the best known independent inventors. He has won over a dozen awards for his inventions. Robert made the name for himself as the inventor of the Polyclone Instant Rubber Stamp Machine. With diversity in mind and interest in gardening, he experimented with a new formulation for fertilizers that led to the development of Green Wizard. From a very early age, Robert Siong had a penchant for creating new things. Over the years, he has created dozens of inventions and won dozens of awards, both national and international. Among the awards are National Inventor of the Year in 1994, awarded by the Ministry of Science, Technology and the Environment, 1997 National Youth Award, Outstanding Young Malaysian Award and medals at the Geneva International Invention Exhibition. I was interested in all these inventions when I was young. You know, in the school, I like to support it. I saw all these new things. You know. And I only started very invention in 1998 when I started uh, making a robot function. Among Robert's most successful invention is the Polycone Instant Rubber Stamp Machine that was launched by the Prime Minister in 1994. It is an invention that revolutionized the art of making rubber stamps. With this machine, even the most intricate rubber stamp can be produced within five minutes. This invention found its way to market all over the world, including Thailand, New Zealand, Russia and the United States. This enterprising inventor now manages his business from his home, which he has refurbished inventively. It has a well-equipped office and plenty of rooms for robots to think and experiment his ideas. Green Wizard is an organic-based fertilizer. It contains enzymes that help to promote the development and multiplication of microorganisms in the soil. This will help to decompose the soil and increase its nutrient content. When I move in this house, I was into gardening before I never gardening. So when I went to the place to buy some of the fertilizer, what I saw was those very bulky parts, you know, all kinds of big and they're not the effective because they're very diluted. So my idea is to get something which is more convenient to apply. I mean, for home gardening, but we need something which is more convenient, more the application must be simple, and it must work well. This is why I'm going to buy a good thing. The specially formulated fertilizer is packed in concentrated powder form. The uniqueness also lies in its packaging. It is clean and convenient to use. Just a dash or two. The next dash of fertilizer is only required after two or three weeks later. This fertilizer can put for any type of plant. 
you don't flower and plants or plants, vegetables, anything. Because this is a soil fertilizer. To my thinking, soil is not important to a plant. Soil is just a whole the root, right? The plant doesn't need the soil. Plant only needs the nutrients. So this is to add the nutrients into the ground. And this fertilizer, the unique part is that it contains a certain kind of enzyme. We call it a probiotic enzyme. Where the food in the ground, it will enhance the growth of the microorganism and the bacteria. But we need these bacteria to break down nutrients which we put in and which already existing in the soil. Only then the plant is able to stop it. And it also contains a kind of chelating agent which makes the water wetter. What I mean wetter? Wetter is a suspension water. Right? We need the water to be more thicker. But the plant absorbs the nutrients through the water. If the water is not thick or too thin, the plant only absorbs the water. It doesn't pull out the nutrients. So what this does is that it helps the water be thicker. And when the plant absorbs the water, it pull out, also pull out the nutrients which they need. That's why it works very well. The advantages of Green Wizard are many. I believe this product can go very far. So, um, I, my target is for all the home gardeners. Home garden means almost every home shall have a plant. Even if there is a big garden or a small garden. I'm sure they have at least a small part of plant. Right? So, for so some people who have a small garden, if they go to nursery, normally they buy a big fertilizer, which is very inconvenient. You have to put a lot. Right. So those which, which they cannot finish, they have to rubber, tie with a rubber band, put it in a Tupperware, and then keep it for a long time. So sometimes if they forget about it, the water goes inside, and they get spoiled and have to throw away. But my product is very simple. It comes in very concentrated, and the application is so simple that you can just put like a soft not just apply in, and it works very well. Robert Young has not advertised his product, but friends and neighbours have already placed orders for the Green Wizard. That's because his large garden does advertising for him. A uh, few of these um, multi-level companies are very fortunate for this. Right? So these people have all the networking. Right? They are very interested in this product, so this is a repeating order for them. Right? So my target is every household. Even the people who live in an apartment where they only got one part of the plant, these people are working for the CEO where they, they don't like to put on a, 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 a special clothing to do the gardening. They just want a one spot of plant. So this will be very proper for them. Right? They don't dirty your hand and they just don't look awful like in the house. So my target is even from the biggest bungalow to the smallest apartment. Healthy leaves, luxurious flowers and bountiful fruits the result of Robert Young attending to the root of the problem. His wizardry in inventions has led to the development of a formulation to enrich the soil that feed the plants. With a dash of green wizard, plants become greener and healthier. That's Robert's most recent inventive accomplishment. Right. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> okay. This is uh, one of my... In uh, invention. You see, a lot of time when we have a uh, mosquito problem, what we do is actually we, we try to, to chase them away. Uh, hopefully, maybe to bite your neighbor. Lah, right? We, use, we also use repellent. Right? Because repellent, we do not kill them. As a, sometimes, I'm sure you experience this. Sometimes you will buy a, a certain brand, maybe a goldfish, uh, mosquito coil. The first week, it works very well. Eventually, the mosquitoes doesn't seem to be Frighten of, of, of that product anymore, right? They, they get immune, they, they get familiar, they, they're, not, they're not frightened anymore. So my, my innovation is that it is an attraction. We lure the mosquito into the, the like a paste type of thing. See? When it land on it, it gets stuck there and it die there, right? So they do not build, out, build up an immune system where they, uh, they, are, they are frightened of, of the product, right? This is mosquito card, mosquito. Huh? Okay, this is interesting. This is actually our latest, my latest uh, innovation, which, which uh, we, together my wife and me, where we invented this product to help the all run Asli. As we run Asli, the rural communities, the flood victims, all these war zone people. See? So these people, 
do not have clean water. They have water. They get the water from the stream, from the river, from the rain, everything, right? But they are not able to filter the water. Reason is that even you give them a filter, you can give them MV, you can give them cold way, whatever way you give them, they are not able to use because they do not have water pressure from their tap. They just merely pipe the water from the river, from the stream to the home. There are water flowing, but they do not have the touch, not the, 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 the force. If you install water to the tap, the water won't flow. So they, they cannot use. So what we did is that we create a cap, the cap, so that they can pump water to force the water through the filter. It's as simple as that, but it works. Right? Anything that works is good. So we already deployed, I think, a few thousand, I think about 5,000 sites all over the world. Even Orasli or the war zone, I think. So the innovation is actually the cap. It's not about the filter. So with this, you just take a, a, a Coke bottle, Pepsi bottle, Coca-Cola bottle, you know, you just put the dirty water inside and you just pump a few times. What comes up through the filter is clean water. Okay, this video is taken in Bangladesh. It's taken, it's taken deployed there by this Muslim association called Mapin. I'm sure you, you, you are familiar with Mapin, see? So this is in the, 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 what, the, the, the Rohingya refugee camps. So they, they uh, deployed there quite a lot there. They even took to Yemen, to Syria, all this uh, Muslim type of, uh, what's it, war, war time. Right. These refugees, eh, they are living in the, the, of course, the refugee camp. Their water is actually from the, we call the tube wells. They pump the water from the ground. What comes out is muddy and, and smelly, you know. So the, what they have been using, what they have been, how they use the water previously, all they can do is that they take a, a container, maybe let the water settle, take the cleaner one, use a T-shape, the cloth, the tape, lah. then they, they have to drink already. See, what comes out now is like almost pure water. Because we are using a membrane, this is actually a ceramic filter, now we are giving them membrane filter, which is 0 0.02 micron. It is as good as your expensive filter at home. Right? It removes 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, of the, the dirt, everything. Right? So you see, from there to there, it's almost a miracle to them. These people have never seen clean water in their life. Imagine if they have been drinking that, you know, all their life. So what I'm trying to say is, eh, simple innovation that works is the most practical. You don't have, a lot of people say, oh, you give them high tech, they use solar panel, they use generator, thing. Who is going to pay? First thing, who's going to pay? Second thing, who is going to maintain? Right? It, it costs a lot. I was the host said, it costs them, we sell to them at 125 ringgit, one set. So even, so we work with a lot of NGO, you know, we work with NGO, they actually like lottery club, whatever, lion club, I think, they purchase it from us and they deploy to them. So you even like Gambuda Foundations, like Maxis Foundation, IOI property, they are the ones who actually support them, I think. Right? Simple and cheap type thing. These are some of the awards actually won because of this simple innovation, just a cap. This is me. Hello. My name is Robert. I actually, I originally I'm from Penang. Well, I've been living in Kiev for a long, long time. Right? That was a long time ago. And we are young and when he was alive. Right? Right? And Mr. Sugu said, I think it is just skip this. Lah. So in 2019, actually we won the, 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 the Infinity Water Filter, won the MCY Malaysia uh, Commercialization Award. Eh? It comes with 100,000 won money. So we, we use this money to invest right in the production, in the, in the mold, I think. Eh? Right, this is some of the thing. I think you mentioned this, the matter. Okay, so inventions actually, eh? People always ask, what, what, how do you find ideas? How do you think? They are actually everywhere. Most of invention are for the solution of the problem, which sometimes we just overlook. We did not see the thing. Example, see, those days in a supermarket, maybe some years ago, right? Either you carry a bag, uh, carry a basket provided there, or use a trolley. To carry a basket, you need to carry a bit heavy. And sometimes you use a trolley, it's too big. Maybe you just buy a few things. You don't want to use a trolley. 
So suddenly someone, I think this is not too long ago, maybe 10 years or five years ago, somebody comes out a trolley with a wheel. So simple by putting wheels in the trolley, it becomes a new innovation, which is convenience, which now you can see all the supermarket using. So simple. Right? Why why do people never think of that then? And this somebody come out by putting four wheels on, 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 on the basket. Right? It's not that difficult. The problem is People, problem is our culture, our attitude. Example, I say, when you see uh, something drop, when you go shopping, right? When you see something drop on the floor, normally, what do you do? Or at least maybe you say, oh, not my problem. Like somebody drop it. I, I didn't make the thing drop. You will, you might walk away. Some people just walk away, right? It's not a problem. They don't, they don't get involved. Or somebody. Maybe they were boy scout, right? They, they, the, the, the master teach them to do good this. He would have picked it up and put it back. That's the next best thing to do. Right? Put it back, put it back. He did a good deal. But as an inventor, if you want to be inventive, right? What you should do is that you should pick it up, you will put it back, and you think, why did it fall? What, what's the reason why it fall? Can you invent something which prevent them from falling? That could be an invention. Right? It's so obvious, is eh? But most people walk away. Right? So you think of something, maybe, or something they invented the, the non-falling rack or something, something, you know, whatever. Right? This is how you look for a problem. You, you must make problem, people's problem, your problem. Then you think of something, how to solve them, and make them pay for it. This is all about. You're not going to give them for free. Simple invention. I'm sure everybody talks about this, right? So this is invented by a Malaysian, uh, a good friend of mine. It's an egg. Uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, in the mama store, in the coffee tea, I think people use that. They put the, the egg inside and they put hot water and the thing drop, right? So what does it inspire? What inspired him to come up with this, this gadget? So most invention, the ideas is nothing new. It's actually able, people adopting an idea from something else and to apply in your new product. You know what is this? It was an hourglass. I'm sure he, he could have seen Aladdin, you know, Aladdin at Arabian night. So people using the, 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 the sand all right, timer, they put the sand, the sand flows, and that, that would tell the time. So instead of put the sand, he put water. The water, how much the water flows, how fast the water flows, it will determine how long the egg is going to submerge in the hot water, and that will determine how well the egg is going to be boiled, how hard the egg will be. Then, it's a solution. Just a container with a hole at the bottom. It's a product. It's a great dimension. This toothbrush, I, I, I don't have the thing here. It is a toothbrush holder, where you just put your toothbrush in the, into the, in the, in the, in the, the compartment, you do not have to hold it. You just pull it out, the, 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 the door will open. When you put it back, the door will automatically close. Right? So it's a, it's a very unique toothbrush. So the, it's the same thing. Where does the idea come from? It's the same idea as your book, the, the binder, the file binder, right? You open it, you press it, it's actually the spring will actually close back. You think that I same idea. He made it in a, into a, a I think it's quite successful, this brown. This is interesting. This is a toothbrush. Why is it so funny? You know, the shape of like, you know, funny toothbrush. Your dentist, your dentist, teach you or tell you to brush your teeth up and down. Am I correct? Right? But everybody, what they do? Side to side. I think the dentist say you're wrong. Nah. So this guy, to make it happen, to solve the dentist, it comes to a toothbrush where they just goes up and down. You, they, they cannot use this, right? It goes up and down, All right? So, what what does he? How does he come up with this this idea? You know what was what the idea where the idea came from? It's from the chunk code. The guy is a farmer, right? So he believed that using chunk code, where they kept uh, this curved type of of, of, of shape, he can use the, the chunko the, to, to, 
to dig the ground more effectively, more efficient, right? So it comes out with toothbrush, it looks like Jumko. Right, people say invention can make money. This guy is rich, All right? <laughs> He's worth more than half a billion ringgit. With what? A rubber band. Half a billion is a lot of money, you know? All right, so simple idea. And this is actually nothing new. It's actually a Malaysian traditional game which people have been playing a long time, the Russian rubber band. Right? I have been doing a lot of workshops for, for, for children. This was sponsored under this IYC, right? So we, we do some workshops to teach children how, 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 how to be creative, plan, right? So the workshops. So this is, so we get children, uh, teenagers waiting to come together and they, we give them uh, some, some, some sort of training or thing, and they have to come up with their own ideas, right? So very interesting, even kids, this is, I think about 10 to 11, 12 years old, something like that, right? Uh, I think early, early secondary school, right? So they come up with ideas that are so simple that, you know, okay, this, this group comes and says, oh, because you say that, of course, the promise statement said, when my mother cook, when my, by the time my father come home, the dishes all cold, it's not tasty, you know, all this thing, right? So he want to make a, uh, uh, that's what the, the cover food cover the two times where you can retain the heat of the food right so it's very simple it's just put some, some gadget i think right and this group they came in late you know you know what happened they came in late so all the drink is finished as you know when this this drink finished somebody had to open the cover and scoop water from the top or, like, or somebody had to leave it so the water will flow so he comes to the idea why don't we make the floor of this container to have a sliding, right? The angle of slice. The water will flow automatically. So simple as that. Why did people make it? Right? Oh, uh, and this group, it's a group of girls, say, oh, say they like to wear flowers in the hair. I've got the, the flower weather and the spoil, I think. So he said, oh, I want to make a artificial flower where it comes with fragrance or feel. What they do is see, when they wear the hair, they just need to break it, break the, 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 the packaging, uh, and just press it, and the perfume will be released and it smells good. I think, and the, the, the charm, eh, the, the, the design, it can be interchangeable. It becomes a Lego type, you want to put rose, you want to put flowers, you want butterfly, they can just interchange it. No, it becomes a, a novelty type thing. Eh? No, these are good ideas which actually can be commercialized. This is good. Not not insult, huh? Not not right. <laughs> right. So this guy, this group, you know, he said they have been reading somewhere that manic is good for the flows of the blood in that body. That's why people got magnetic chair, magnetic mat, and all the magnetic car seat or that. They believe when they sit on the magnetic magnetic uh, surface, the blood will flow. So we said, okay. So if I make a brush where the tips are magnetic, if I keep combing my hair, I'll be smarter. Because my, 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 the blood flows in my brain. Well, actually, we cannot say they're wrong and we cannot say they're right. But it's an idea. Maybe the hair will grow, is it? Right, Mr. Zagos? Right. <laughs> right. So these are ideas where we instill to them, is it? Then they will be thinking. We want them to think. Right or wrong is not a matter. We want them to start thinking. So this is my, when I give the workshop and I give uh, coaching, everything, say, or when people, inventors come to me, no, every inventor that come to me or every inventor you come to you, they will think, oh, my idea is the greatest in the world. This is the best invention in the world. You know, people will come to give to me. So, you know, every, most inventors are dreamer, idealistic. Right? They think everything they do is the best in the world. So if you tell them they are wrong, they won't be happy. Right, they think, oh, are you going to try to sabotage me? You're not encouraging me. I think I say, no, no, no. So what I do? This is my my own uh, guidelines eh, to to invention. We call it a dumb approach. Dumb is stupid, la bodo. Why we call it? Right. The first thing, what the dumb means. The first thing, the D. They must ask them, ask themselves, is their ideas doable? Can they do it? Don't tell me that oh, this technology is is available. Japan have done it, America done it, NATO done it. But say you're not Japan, you're not America, you're not, not, not NATO, you cannot do. If you cannot do anything, at the end of the day, nothing will come out, right? So it must be doable by you. Maybe the thing investment in it, 10 million, you don't have 10 millions. So it's, at the end of the day, it doesn't come out. 
Okay, what to do about? Next thing, it must be usable. You can make a pen, a pencil, six feet long. You can write, no problem. Writing on the paper, you can write. But it's not usable. Now you cannot carry it now. It's not practical. Much usable. Of course, the most, the M, most important, it must be marketable. You cannot sell, don't do. Give free, people will take. You can sell one to the auntie, one to the uncle. That is not marketing, right? Marketing must be, people are going to pay. Right? It must be, there's a market for it, there's a demand for it, huh? right? And the next one is a B. It must be bankable. Bankable means people are willing to invest in you, right? Why does Grab become a unicorn? Because people invest in them, then it grows. Even how good is invention, if there's no investor, you'll never grow, right? Become shop sendiri, kampung, jago kampung, that thing, right? So it must be something bankable. Investors look at what is a profit, what is ROI, what is the thing, you know, you must look into this, right? Invention is about making money. Other you are talking about humanitarian, that's beside the point. But first thing, it must be bankable. Because we spend a lot of money. If you cannot think, make back. That's why a lot of inventors die as pauper. They die poor. <laughs> it's a problem. Right? And last one, the S. It must be sustainable. Sustainable means how big is your reachable market? The one you can reach. Don't tell me China is so big. People say, oh, this China use, you know, you sell something to Chinese, the Chinese are better. You, you are not able to reach them. Right? So if your, it's your invention, there's your new ideas of product, is it another like multi-level marketing type of thing? You know, some, you remember those days when this this uh, mushroom thing come out, oh, everybody swears the greatest thing in the world, right? And then six months later, it's no more there. So if your product is going to be like Panadol by Milo, you're going to sell 100 years and it's still selling. That is a sustainable product. You have to look into this, right? So the whole thing, multi dumps. Don't tell me it's a great idea. Right? So, Invention is like you're running through a gander and now people knock knock you better survive at a day, you know? So you have to guide yourself. Uh, use this dumb as your valid, your validator, right? To validate your own ideas. It's all about reachable fruit. Don't tell me, oh, some, some guru will tell you, oh, go for the high hanging fruit, go for the low hanging fruit. I see, it doesn't matter. If you can reach it, you reach it. Go for the reachable fruit. It's not high or low, but what you can reach. Okay, so to end this, so I have this golden rule of, of invention. So this is sort of like a, you know what I'm so a lot of people see travel light, everybody now, even the most kampong of travel light. For the rate, when you see a rate light, what do you do? I think everybody knows that we are law and citizen. We stop, I'm sure we stop. Okay, we stop, we stop. Yellow light, what do you do? Tekan kwaski. Right, some people are not that kind of thing. Right, so I, I, it's not like no, I don't do that. Right, so we should look. Right, so if the yellow light, we should stop and look and see, you know, all these things. Oh, the green light. When you see the green light, what do you do? Oh, you are driving. But as an inventor, see, when you see something, you stop, you look, and you think. Do not go. If you keep stop, look, go, you never think of anything. So the whole basic is that we should stop anything. We should stop. That is a problem with everything. There's no perfect thing, all right? So we must be bold enough to challenge them. So we must ever stop, look, you think. Right? This is the basic rule which you should, right? So last word advice. I think you can read this. I can share the slide if you want everything in the matter, right? So we have to be realistic. Don't don't tell people, don't think of yourself that, oh, uh, once you got the idea, once you got a patent, the whole world owe you owe you a living. It's never true. No. Nobody owe you a living in this world, right? So be careful with that, right? And you just don't don't say, oh, don't give up a job, thing like that. Right? So you got the idea, what do you do? This that is an agency under mosti. It's called Yaya San Innovasi Malaysia stand for GIM, right? They got a lot of programs. They got trainings, they got, they got you know, a lot of things. I'm one of the trainers, right? So I actually, when you got idea, we actually help them to, to, to productize the idea. A lot, a lot of inventors, they got ideas, but they do not know what is the end game. What is the product will be on the shelf, right? So they even got a lot of grant for you, you know, people can call it free money, but that, 
no, no, it's not that right. So they got a lot of programs where the first one is of uh, the grassroots type of thing, like Mark Chris is stand for mainstream grass innovation, where they, you know, where you come up with the grassroots ideas, they will help you to, to right? So they got many other programs uh, where they give grants to you, right? So if anybody here or everybody watching this later, you got ideas, you can approach them. They are the, 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 the context, they are in the, the tech park, technology park, okay, right? So you can actually do that. All right. So that, thank you very much. So everybody can invent. That's my last one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Robes. I will go for questions and answers. Any questions? Yep. So everybody is good enough, not to ask, ask question already. Perfect. <laughs> Your presentation is so good. Don't no, wait no. for any questions. <laughs> All right. There's no question. Uh, yeah, one one from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great uh, presentation with uh, you know um, motivational also. Uh, I have uh, invented quite a few, but you know all just um, in the end uh, it doesn't go very far. <laughs> just pattern on it, Pat pattern, but no commercialization at the end. Um, no, I just want to know: uh, Do you go through that pattern process to protect your IP? Or, or rather copyright or whatever yeah you see, if you think your, your idea your, your 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 innovation have commercial value if you think that people will copy it, right? <laughs> you should be done. but if your ideas is shock shock one i know sometimes you know we see that shock the theory one of course don't waste money <laughs> right so some of my patent i say even you patent the best is that you must patent at least in malaysia don't have this type of, of mindset of, Oh, some some inventors are getting carried away. They want to the whole world. Okay, if somebody in, in China copy your product, what can you do? You cannot go there and sue them, right? It takes years and it's so expensive. So people also ask me, oh, what happens huh, if somebody copy idea? What happens if a Chinese copy idea? So I just joke to them, huh? if the Chinese don't copy my idea, it is an insult to me, you know. <laughs> if they copy, I don't copy. I mean, my, my idea must be very bad. So I not take it for self consolation. <laughs> but you don't you should patent, but don't carry it away. Don't get carried away. And and may I know uh, what fortune you managed to build upon from your ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I did quite well with the rubber stamp machine, you know. Right, because it actually revolutionized the whole it's something new. It's something that people are waiting for. So if you if your innovation is just like improving 10% of an existing idea, 20%, we if you are not into the market yet, you will never survive. Right? Example like if I, I I that's a scissors, right? Okay, scissors. If I if I'm not in the manufacturer, in the business of making scissors, in and I got an idea that I can improve 10%. Of, of the uh, thing, right? I, I, if I invest in scissors, it won't work because I do not know the market. I do not know anything else, right? So unless your innovation that you're making a scissors, which is not a scissors and it cuts the scissors, which is 180% and 180 degree chain of what I'm sitting, then maybe you should invest in, in, your, in the production thing. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, you know, you know, that guy made uh, a fortune. So I, I wonder, how do you compare with that? <laughs> no, 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 no comparison. <laughs> right, no comparison. That, that's... Happy, happy with what, where I am now. So I'm okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Sugu. Yep. You check the check box because there are some questions there, I think. Yeah. So, um, Hussein is handling that. Yeah, but maybe you have to speak up so that the uh, Dr. Robes Young can uh, answer or something. Hussein? Hey, uh, so there's a question that says, Hi, I want to ask, do you conduct any analysis to Hello. the effectiveness of the product? And can you share the process of how you convert your idea into physical product? What, what, what would he mean? What do you mean by that? Do I check the process? The effectiveness of the process. Of the okay, effectiveness, of course. 
of course you see like all product you have to check because it's a business you, see? you have to check the due diligence everything right you have to check the market check with your compare with your competition everything you, that is all the normal type of of of, of job or work you need to do see? example if you get a product from from overseas example it's not your own invention you buy it from the overseas what do you do you still have to go through all this it's the same thing see? so after you produce your 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 innovation the next thing is that the marketing so you have to do all the due diligence for for them okay there's a question it says i noticed that some of the inventions by mr roberts involved special expertise like chemicals and materials and maybe do you have this knowledge yourself by education or training or did you make others help point is is it advisable to focus on our own speciality to be successful okay sir my my philosophy is that you think without the box right most guru tell you think outside the box once you got a box even you think outside the box you still be in a perimeter within the box right so most inventions eh, that like i mentioned earlier you take adopt a uh, technology the ideas or the know-how from another completely different product and to apply into the innovation so to me you see no nobody can know everything in life right i'm not encyclopedia i'm not mr google right so i worked closely with universities right that's why i i, I was i, I was a the uh, innovation fellow under UTM, I I I very close with all the universities. So we see, you see, inventors like us, like me, right, whoever is with me, we knows what to do. We might not know how to do, right? So a lot of professors, all the expertise in universities, they knows how to do. They do not know what to do. Right? <laughs> so it's a marriage of convenience. We go to them, they are happy, we are happy, you know. Right, so we get the job done. They got something to do. We should pay them. So it's good. So we don't have to know everything. Right, like those days when we study in school, we actually study everything. But now, what you most important is that you need to study Hello. how to use ah, Google. Ah yes, yes, haha. <laughs> well, ah no, Hello. that's not. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Somebody, I already muted. I think. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so you get, you get what i mean right yeah, I think so we do not know yes, we, do, we do not know need to know everything but we need to know what we want the how can be outsourced can be learned can be google but we must have this creativity that that the thing that we when we we know what is needed i think that's the most important we sell the what we don't you don't say why you know people don't care why you do it right so some guru you know you, you look from internet oh they say oh it's, it's, it's the why you do i said no no people do not buy your why it's a product what is it is in the market what is it on the shelf that people buy right of course why why you make this i want to be rich who cares whether you want to be rich <laughs> right thank you i think that's maybe almost, I think there's no more. Okay, there's another question. Hi, Dr. Roberts. It says, what is in your opinion on using platforms like Kickstarter to get any innovation or invention to market? It is quite different from traditional growth where you need to convince everyone that you're making actual works first. I think Kickstarter on, on this uh, Indiegogo type, it's a good platform for you to, to get, you know, to, to get the funds on all right but there's the danger so when you expose the thing before you actually commercialize the thing where before you even have a product the people will steal the idea right so most of them ideas you know, especially those ideas are innovation are idea based right when you look at it everybody knows how it's done that is a danger if you as expose it unless so if you got this idea the best is that you have to get a uh, under NDA that thing, you look for some investors, they invest, then you mass production and you conquer the market. Best thing you do. Don't tell the idea before you even have a product. People you just, you know, take it. 
Okay, that seems all about it. Maybe there could be one more question, but maybe in time, how about we ask all our participants to turn on the camera so we could take a group photo. If you still have any questions, please ask in the chat. Otherwise, uh, afterwards, I'll be sending the attendance link, which we'll be generating certificates based on. Hey, Dr. Robert Harun here. Ah, okay. I was just about to call you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank oh, you very okay. much, Dr. Robert, for joining us for this session. I was, uh, though I was having a parallel session, uh, but uh, the speaker for this <laughs> session was louder. So I was <laughs> observing and watching your throughout your video, though I couldn't uh, participate here. Yeah. Okay, it was really an amazing and eye-opening session. I mean, like uh, uh, I as an academician and also I'm coming before from industry, what I see that, yes, the commercialization is something that we should we should come forward for that. I mean, like something something like we should always think, stay out of, the, we, are, we should think out of the box. We talk the box. Yeah, so <laughs> what I want to, I mean, uh, hear from you here, something that, Maybe you can give as your conclusive remarks to especially those who are still the students uh, at the university level, either bachelor, master or PhD, because we have some students joining this session, like how they can, I mean, as a student from their point, because it's not that once you get your job or you become an entrepreneur, then only you start thinking of inventing the things or innovating the things. This is from your classroom. It starts from there. So when you start thinking from that point, so how, what do you do? Uh, uh, what do, what do you want to advise to them? Like, what they should actually focus on other than their study? Because study is one thing that they are going to get at the end degree, but something, something different, which makes them stay out of the box or stay out of the queue. Right. I think the the worst problem about mankind or people like you and me is, is our our satisfaction in life, right? So if you don't challenge yourself, you see, if, if you think that everything is, you think iPhone 4 is good, you, you would have stopped at iPhone 4, right? Apple wouldn't have come up with iPhone 12, right? So you must, everything you must see. So sometimes maybe people say, oh, yeah, my life is miserable. Everything I see, that's a problem, <laughs> right? So it becomes that, is it? Okay, you see, you have to have a culture uh, in yourself that you want to improve. I tell you a story about, when I was in Japan, see, the Japanese culture and our Malaysian culture are quite different. Right? Example, like, see, there is a company that makes table. This table has four screws that holds a leg. Right? I've been doing that for a long time. So one day, the tea lady, the lady you know, was stripping the floor, he come out. She got this brilliant idea. Oh, I can make this table with three screws. It is as good or, or better. Okay, she write in to a proposal to the, to the management, I got this idea, ring. he submitted to them. So when they open up the box, they see these new ideas. Wow, they were impressed with her. They actually reward her, maybe promote her. No more tea lady, <laughs> no more stripper, right? So this is how you encourage people. But in Malaysia culture, I don't know about your country, you sweep the floor, you please sweep the floor. Don't invade my territory. That's it. You don't encourage this type of mindset and culture. I think that should change. With that changes, I think change will, things will improve. Thank you very much, Dr. Robust. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so go, if there are no more questions, maybe we can conclude. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Robust Yong. That was a very interesting presentation. Put for the thought. I'm very <laughs> sure many are going to benefit. Now, before we close this session, I'd like to invite our chair, Dr. Harun, to give a closing remark. Dr. Harun. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sogo. Uh, so first of all, uh, again, I would like to say thanks to Dr. Robert Young for accepting our invitation to be the speaker for today. Uh, it was a really uh, wonderful session. I mean, I, I, I myself also, I was surprised to see that like the rubber band thing that you have mentioned, I mean, like it was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing that, you know, these are the small, small problems. And just now in our WhatsApp group, I'm seeing a message from Prof. Burhan that there should be something to, you know, noise suppressor uh, in the in the virtual virtual platforms, virtual meetings like this one. So, I mean, like these are the real time problems which we need to come up with the solutions. And that what Dr. Robert said that the wheel is already there. We don't have to invent the wheel again. What we have to do is to come forward for the innovation to solve the problem. So that's what is the innovation. 
so uh, i'm very sure that uh, uh, we have 32 participants right now in the in the uh, in this session and there are many who are watching us from uh, live from facebook uh, this session is live broadcasted at our facebook as well so i'm sure those who are listening they will also think that how they can solve the problem around us and then they can come forward which dr robes has uh, highlighted in last one hour plus and i'm very very sure that it was very useful and everybody is going to get benefited and we will invite dr robes again maybe specifically for one of your invention that you want to talk about it so i mean like that particular one we want to know your story from starting until the end how you have come through the whole phase that is going to be more inspiring for our new generation that they want to i mean they want, we want to hear you more we want to know more from you from your experience that is going to be i mean like uh, amazing so probably sugumaran can arrange with you another session maybe after your free time maybe after one month or two months whenever you are convenient so thank you very much once again uh, for joining us and thank you very much to all the participants for coming all the way uh, joining this session over your weekend i know weekend everybody would like to sleep or take rest uh, but uh, due to this lockdown and everything we are 24 hours in the rest mode so uh, utilize this rest mode and think out of the box and i'm sure the last slide that uh, dr robes has uh, mentioned the take home notes that will be very useful to everybody uh, you can always access this recording from our uh, uh, facebook page Uh, it's very simple you can just go to ieee consultants network malaysia you can find it and you can refer back to this or if you are an academician you can maybe play this video to your students in your classroom especially to undergrad students so that's going to be very uh, inspiring uh, and uh, before i conclude i would like to say thanks to prof kurhan uh, our uh, uh, former chair plus the uh, pioneer of this ieee consultants network Uh, malaysia uh, affinity group and uh, i have together with the our uh, uh, vice chair uh, mr homin homin you can uh, wave your hand people can see you <laughs> okay that's homin our vice chair and our secretary uh, mohammad hussain who was taking care of this session throughout starting from the registration uh, form and throughout the technical support and also other our team members who joined this session today uh, i cannot go through the list is very long i need to find out who is there so i'll just say thank you very much to my team as well as the participants who have joined this session today uh, with this i will conclude uh, this today's webinar and looking forward to welcome you in our upcoming sessions with this take care of yourself stay safe stay at home don't go here and there uh, unless you are vaccinated okay i hand over the session back to sugu thank you very much okay Thank you very much, Dr. Harun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. Till we meet again, I would like to extend our appreciation on behalf of IEEE and Malaysia to Dr. Robert Young for his time and sharing his expertise, knowledge, and experiences, which we which were very informative. Thank you also to all the participants for making this session a success. we'll keep you updated till then once again thank you bye have a good weekend this is okay can we have safe. a yeah a group photo i have okay. group photo yeah, and okay. i'll be sharing the attendance link now yes that is very much important so that we record the moment with dr robert with us <laughs> yes please okay okay please everyone turn on your camera Just give me maybe another like ten seconds. We will post this photograph at our Facebook page as well, so you guys can access it from here later on. <laughs> and if any of you is not here, I should probably member, especially I should probably member and I should probably consultant <laughs> member. Please do join us. <laughs> okay, three. Okay, two, one. Okay, can you stay with me because I think there are two. Uh, I need to take two screenshots. Uh, Another one. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, so I just I think the last thing I just need to share the attendance link. Uh, 
I'll be sharing it in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I think Rotan, you need to allow maybe for another five minutes, like they keep the session on after this. So yes, everybody sir. can get the link of attendance for me. Yes, yes, I'll be keeping the, the meeting on. So just for another like five, 10 seconds, 10 minutes. The, the link is in the chat. Please make sure you register and make it key in a, the correct email and name. And if you are done, thank you very much. And if you have any feedback to us, any events that you would like us to conduct in the future, please suggest in the, in the feedback form. So uh, I would like to take an excuse because I have another session that I am the uh, the <laughs> main person. So I have to take excuse for now. So thank you, Dr. Obes. See you again. Take care of yourself and thank you everyone else.